Okay, I'm actually just fixing to walk out the door to head back home. I've been doing some homework and I wanted to hop on here before I go home and drop a bit of godly counsel about relationships. Um, particularly if you are married, but I think this can go for anybody and everybody. And um, so as some people are hopping on, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the people that need to hear it will hear it, that they will humbly receive it, that they will um, become more self-aware and aware of how they are responding re and if they are reacting, that, that they would um, commit to pray more for the people that they're in relationship with and for the health and healing in their relationship and the health of healing of the people that you have given them. Lord God, we just pray that 2022 would be a year of great relationships. Y'all want great relationships? You guys share this tag some people. I don't think they show my stuff to, like they used to. Might just be that I'm not on, but I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, this um, this is going to help you. So, how many on here are married? Do I got any married ladies on here? Jennifer, hey, how you doing? Um, if you are married... It is so important that you show honor to your spouse, particularly in front of your children, in front of other people, and also in private. Men, it is one of their greatest needs to be honored by their spouse. And for women, if there's some men on here that are married, the greatest need of a woman is to be cherished loved, desired, and a man needs to be needed and honored. And so the women's live, you know, <laughs> nowadays, you know, the woman and the man's working and, you know, um, it, it'd be easy to kind of get an attitude, a hard heart that you don't need your spouse, but it's important that you relate to your spouse, that you need them and that you appreciate them and honor them in that way, especially for husbands. And, you know, a lot of times a woman will kind of, in thinking that a man is like her, she will, you know, like women that <clears throat> maybe don't understand this kind of stuff or haven't been taught by their mom or haven't had it mirrored, they might meet a guy and just start trying to meet all of his needs in a dating relationship saying, you know, I, if I can just get him to need me, you know, then we'll end up together and he'll love me. And it's not, that's not how it works. Um, that's not how God put men together. It is, you know, a guy might kind of cave into that and be like, well, this is, you know, this is good, this is easier, whatever. But typically, um, it's men that need to be needed. And, you know, I know when I was dating, I was, uh, right before my 40th birthday when I met my husband and I had been around for a while, read lots of books, observed lots of marriages, <laughs> prayed a lot. And I remember specifically, and it's so important, and you can start where you're at, um, if you've been super independent as a woman or whatever, to, um, Give your husband, or like, let's say you're in a dating relationship as a single lady, don't just try to be indispensable to the guy. Like, give him things he can do to help you. If he's trying to help you, and I know, like, chivalry is kind of supposedly out of vogue, but if he's trying to help you, don't be like, I can do it, I got it. You know, let the man help you. And even if um, it's something you can do yourself, and <laughs> I don't know how guys will... He, hearing me say this will feel about it but I'm not saying you use the person but you allow him to feel needed and then you appreciate him for the things that he does and you are aware when he's doing stuff for you because if you don't show appreciation for the little things that your spouse is doing they're going to stop doing it because that's part of the blessing of serving somebody else is to be appreciated and so if nothing they do they can't do it right anyway they're not they're going to back off and not be doing as many things so maybe you've 
kind of nitpicked or they haven't been able to do things right or what have you, you have felt like they haven't done it right or they haven't done enough of it. You got to start where you are and start guarding your mouth and showing honor to a person. And one of the things that God told me about the prophetic word for 2022 is not to take things for granted because that's when things start going sour in a relationship when you like just start taking things for granted that your spouse has done and you can't always change another person but you can change how you're responding and you can pay attention to to what their needs are and you can pray for them and you can make sure the motive of your heart I mean I know for me with my husband I wasn't I knew what he needed and so and asking him to help me with certain things and allowing him to uh help me in my life even though I was pretty independent and stuff and appreciate his help and let him know wow this is great this helps and having raised a child by myself it was pretty easy for me to appreciate having especially now that I'm raising a child not by myself it's easy for me and you might not have ever been a single parent before you might have always had a spouse and I know for me it was super easy. It is it is much easier just to be constantly aware of how much help it is not to be raising a child by myself, not to just have depend on one income. You know, he cooks, and you know, there there's certain things that he's not as good at. Like that's another thing. Instead of harping on and getting your mind so wrapped around the thing that they're not doing right change your mindset about that and just get over it <laughs> find the things that they're doing right find the things they like to do and then somehow just kind of allow that other stuff to slip you can pray about it but i mean my husband doesn't do dishes he just does not do dishes he'll do them if i ask him to but as far as me and my time management and stuff i'm like it does not it's not worth it for him to do the dishes because like the first time I asked him to do dishes, I honestly thought he was seriously taking that long. So I would never ask him again, but he just takes that long to do the dishes. And so I'm like, you know what? I'll just do the dishes. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. Every once in a while, you know, I'll ask him to do some dishes. But for the most part, I'm just like, it's not his thing. Cleaning isn't his thing. Cleaning is not his thing. Um, but But that's okay. <laughs> You know, you could be miserable about something like that. I actually know somebody in their marriage who they were much cleaner than their spouse. And that was like their whole marriage problem So was all based on this one person wasn't as clean as the other person. Like, if you're more clean, clean more. <laughs> you know, instead of complaining that they're not clean enough, you know, everybody has their things. Those are not things that are worth having contention in your house and you can actually just decide to think differently about it and it not be an issue or you can make an issue out of things that there is no need to have issue over it usually older people you know as you get older maybe this is something different personalities but as I've got older I've learned to just let some things go it's not that important and also you know Lord help me with this I just cannot stress enough how much men need to be honored and how um, there is a way that a woman can help her husband. Um, and listen, hey, I know there's some evil men out there. There's some men that you think there's no help for this <laughs> this guy or what have you. And, and I will agree that there are some guys that are completely resistant to the Lord. And if you're already married to one of them, I suggest that you fast and pray for them and that you go on with the Lord and you don't make your whole happiness about your spouse. And I know that's hard if they're in a bad place because you're connected to them. But if you just move forward with the Lord, and this might be with a child also that is not walking with the Lord or, you know, um, in any relationship, really, you cannot make and base your whole life response based on where somebody else is. And God calls us to follow him even when nobody else is coming with him. And there are 
there are things that you can do to continue on and serve the Lord. And there are ways that you can move forward in God, irregardless of what's going on with them. And if you have righteousness, peace, and joy flowing in your life, and if you are walking by the Spirit, and you are praying for them, and you are walking in faith, and, you know, they're going to have to really resist God not to change over time. But you don't want to bank your happiness on that. You can still, if you're not in an abusive relationship, and that other person might not be walking with the Lord like you would like for them to, but you can still... Um, enjoy your spouse. You can still enjoy your spouse even if you're not completely spiritually on the same page. And I encourage you to believe the Lord to bring transformation in your relationship. Um, but at the same time, that's another thing. Husbands like to be enjoyed. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to just become a football fan or whatever, but if they have certain things they like, certain hobbies, it's okay you know, that's what the love of God does. You prefer other people to yourself. My husband likes board games and stuff. And I wasn't a board game person. You know, I didn't really care that much about board games. But I play, I play board games with him. And I've learned to like him. I've found games that I like that he also likes. And those are the particular games that I like. And then we'll have, now I host game nights for the people at our church. And he has more people to come over and play games with. And so, you know, we don't always have to... Um, get people to fit into our box of what we think they should be in order for us to be happy. Can anybody say amen to this? Anybody married here know that this is some good counsel that if you will um, submit yourself to the Lord in that relationship, then you're humbling yourself. And even if that's not your favorite thing, even if that's not, you know, even if you're like, well, he's not honorable. Well, you know, you, if you start treating somebody with respect and honor, they are, it does create an atmosphere for, for a person to grow. And if you are married, nine times out of ten, your spouse wants to make you happy. And they feel really crappy if you're miserable with them. And you're always talking about how miserable you are with them. <laughs> or, you're, you know, like they're hurting you left and right. Chances are, that's not their heart's desire to do that. They might just need some help, and God said men need help, and you can help them by seeing them as God sees them, where they are on the way to where they're going, and not being so emotionally distraught and caught up in today and have a broader, bigger picture perspective about who God is and what he's able to do in a marriage and in a person's life, and, and you know... You might need to mourn some hurts. You might need to go through some things in prayer with the Lord. You might need to fast. You might need to have some conversations. You might need to put up some boundaries. Um, you know, God can give you strategy about that. But if you will work on your own relationship with the Lord, you have got to understand marriage is, is a great breeding ground for spiritual maturity <laughs> because... Especially, you know, you're married, you've made a covenant with the person, and so you don't want to get a fatalistic attitude like your life is over if this person doesn't change or move or what have you. you got to get a bigger picture and a bigger view of who God is and how he is able to turn situations around and walk in faith in that marriage so that you can be a light and an example. The Bible talks about this a lot. And I'm mostly talking to women because I'm a woman, and this is what I know. I know my husband's been very patient with me in certain areas. He's very gracious with me. Um, you know, I have been very intentional, very intentional in my marriage in the way that I respond to things. If there is something I want to talk about, I don't just talk about it right then. I decide when a good time to bring things up are I mean we've become more one than ever like we've only been married five years but <clears throat> we've come a whole 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 long way we didn't argue a whole whole lot to begin with except maybe like the first year but one thing I like to do not that I've done this often but I have thought 
remembering, because I remember when I was single, I would tell myself, now when you get married, you're not going to treat your husband like this woman is treating her husband. You are going to have gratitude in your heart for what your spouse is doing. Because I would watch women take their husbands for granted left and right. Not always, but when I was struggling so hard single, I'm like, Lord, if you give me a husband, I will not take him for granted. And it's real easy to get familiar with somebody and just be like, well, they're there, you know, and not appreciate the value of somebody who's committed to you, who loves you, who, who wants to make you happy. They might not be, you know, doing everything perfectly, but really, honestly, it's not a man's job to make a woman happy anyway. If you're already happy in the Lord, you're going to be a lot easier to please. If you are not solid in your relationship with God, there's not going to be anything that guy can do to make things right in your happiness, honestly. I mean, not for any great length of time because we just got to, we got to help each other to the Lord. Let me pray real quick because I actually told my husband I was going to come home. I just was thinking about this today and thinking I really wanted, I felt like the Lord said, get on here and encourage people to honor their husbands and husbands love your wife. Tell your wife she's beautiful. Even when she's not fixed up, women need to hear they're beautiful. Tell them every day. Um, same, same goes with the men. I mean, listen, when you're not telling your wife she's beautiful and then she goes to the grocery store and other guys are noticing that she's beautiful, you're putting her in a place of temptation. That shouldn't affect her. She shouldn't, you know, that should not end up like affecting her because she's already solid. And, you know, same with the ladies with your men you know you let your man know you need him and that you want him and that you enjoy him because there's ladies out there that will try to do that <laughs> and I mean you put guardrails around your marriage but you think of it like that you think I'm the only one that my wife should be hearing this needing to hear this from not that you would need to hear it from anybody else but it's your job <laughs> <laughs> to express to your wife that she's lovely and that she that you desire her it's your job to express to your wife that she's beautiful the world bombards us ladies you know with all of these images that we try to compare ourselves to and even the most secure woman it's nice to hear from your husband that you're beautiful and not just right before you want sex either guys <laughs> Because that, that's not the same thing. Like, we want to know that we're beautiful to you. Like, not just the way that our naked body looks. <laughs> like, it's something deeper than just a sexual thing that we need from a guy. And, um, you know, uh, same thing, same thing with a man. You know, they need to feel that you enjoy them and that you, um, that you need them and not just their money, you know, or what have you. So I just encourage us, everybody who's married, everybody who's desiring to be married, y'all just pray. Go ahead and start praying for your spouse, praying for your marriage, praying for your preparation for marriage. Um, because we need to have the best marriages in the world going on. We need to have the best marriages, kingdom marriages. We need to be like speaking up our spouse to other people never degrade your spouse to somebody else never cut them down to somebody else brag about your spouse brag about their accomplishments i mean i i i, I honestly will i'm not going to credit myself to this it's completely god and the heart my husband had a, a a good heart towards the lord but the lord did in many ways use me as one of the instruments to bring my husband more and more into the person God created him to be. And he's a phenomenal man. He's, he's always been, you know, had, had a heart, had a heart that God knew he had a great heart for the Lord, but I've seen him grow. Like we'll have to write my story sometime. It's just incredible how much he has grown. And, and, um, and then, you know, God's worked in me and he, He's grown me and changed me so much. We we need to not forget what God can do in a person. And we don't want to be part of the devil's tool and instrument to tear somebody down and to keep them in a certain place. And some of y'all might need to do some forgiving, 
Some of y'all need to let some things go. And some of you have to realize that God is not asking you to fully trust your heart to your spouse. And that they're just going to be perfect. He's saying, trust me. Trust me. Trust your heart to me. And be willing to lay down your life. And you might get hurt. And I'm not talking about abuse here, but there, there, there might be some ways that they have not responded and you've had some unmet needs and, you know, people can build up walls between marriages, but I just want to encourage you to keep praying, keep believing and, and trust that, you know, your heart is, your heart is safe in God and that he makes us bulletproof, meaning Whatever he calls us to, whoever he has um, commissioned us to love, it is his job, if we get hurt in the process, to bring restoration to our lives through what we walk through um, for his purposes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remind God of that. I've reminded God of that, not just in my marriage, but in general. Like, you... You know, you brought me through this and I'm going to need some more healing to move forward in this situation. And I need to, you know, I need to to um, be more fearless in my response. And I need to, you got to help me get through this and you got, you know, work through those kind of things with your spouse. Let them know what's going on. Talk to each other. You know, sometimes y'all have to be patient with each other, as you know. But at least if you're being honest and self-aware Look, I know I've been hard here. I know I have been unforgiven. I know I haven't been as responsive as I should be, you know, in this situation or that situation. And, um, you know, really have a willingness, have a willingness to humble yourself before God and say, God, you do through me what I couldn't do on my own. And God will give you strategy to work it out. And I just pray blessing over your marriage and uh, talk to y'all later.